Welcome back to Cinemation. Today, I'll show you a 2019 horror drama film titled Down. Beware of spoilers. Jennifer is the last person to leave the office on Friday nights. For Valentine's Day, she's flying to New York to visit her ex-fiancé. She writes an email, so she grabs some candy and heads out of the office. Guy is also getting ready to leave work simultaneously. Both end up waiting in the elevator together. Jennifer climbs to the 49th floor, and he immediately joins her on 42nd. He starts talking with Jennifer and laughing. She responds but doesn't seem to be interested in a conversation. Guy points out an etching that Guy had made on the wall. The elevator stops suddenly. He presses the alarm button and keys. Nothing works. The elevator's electricity seems to be still on. The guy attempts to open the door. That doesn't work, either. They wave to the fully functional camera, but no one answers their calls. Even worse, they're four stories underground and their phones don't have service. Jennifer is concerned that her flight will be missed if she doesn't find out where security guards are. Fifteen minutes later they call for help, banging on the doors, but no one hears them. The guy thinks there may be an escape hatch, so she climbs awkwardly on his shoulders to check the elevator ceiling. He heard her hand banging and put her down. Jennifer discovers she won't be able to catch her flight. Guy makes jokes to try and cheer her up, but she curses everyone and everything. The two of them finally meet up and carry on with the banter they started when he got off the elevator. Jennifer isn't able to drink from her thermos so the guy offers it to her, but they joke that he should have his own bottle. They both realize they have bottle openers in each other's bags and make fun of it. She accepts her water, but they don't open the wine. They accept the water as a consolation prize, even though they don't have any food. Jennifer gives the candy to the guys. They should keep their rations in case they end up stuck in an elevator until Tuesday, she says. Jennifer finally has to go to the bathroom four hours later. She desperately tries to keep it in, but she is too embarrassed to show her shame to a man. He suggests that she go in the corner and cover her coat. Jennifer says no, so she takes a hot bath in her thermos. He is forced to close his eyes and cover his ears. Guy begins singing and finally, Guy pees. She then adds to the drawing of the elevator wall. They play a game together and start to talk about personal matters. Guy tells Jennifer that he doesn't have anyone who will be looking for him because he is too obsessed about his job. Jennifer agrees. He tells her that she was trying to surprise someone in New York, but he didn't want her to go. They decide it is time to open the wine and give it to her. They drink to the fact that they are not yet dead. They will be much later. The two are keeping each other busy by drawing and becoming closer to one another. He confesses that he had seen her before in the office. He didn't tell her because he didn't want to make it seem like a stalker or make her feel uncomfortable. He didn't think she would take it as seriously as he thought. She actually laughs about it. Both of them finish their drawings and then show each other. His portrait is more humorous than his. Jennifer takes a photograph of the drawing and apologizes. She says she will make it her profile photo if they both survive. They then discuss food. Guy agrees to switch the topic because they are both hungry. He lists a few things, but she decides to talk about love. She turns her camera on Guy and asks him about the most difficult place he has ever fallen in love. Guys can be shy. Jennifer shares her story first. She tells him about a college boyfriend and how they shared a night in a library. He doesn't want to share his story when it's the guy's turn because he doesn't think he has an interesting one. Jennifer suggests that he create a story that tells the story of a girl who wanted to go with him at a picnic. He claims that they were drunk and got into the car. Then, he tells Jennifer that she began to change while he is driving. He then gets strange and uncomfortable and tells Jennifer that he was aroused. He apologizes, claiming he thought he had crossed a line. She says it's fine. Guy approaches her awkwardly, kisses her and then starts to undress her. After he tells her he could fall in love, they make love in an elevator. He tries to get away, but she runs from him. Jennifer tells him she wants to be with her ex again. She wanted to surprise him in New York to make things right. She believes that, unlike a guy, their encounter was casual and should be kept casual because she is open about the feelings she has for her ex. Jennifer tells Guy how she feels about her ex and the past relationship. Guy on the other side believes they were connected and that her ex isn't worthy of her. Guy gets mad at her for clearly loving him. She tells Guy to get out of the elevator and they will just continue their lives apart. He begins to feel alienated, even though they are locked in the same box. Jennifer and Guy feel a shift in their relationship. Guy starts to tell Jennifer the truth about himself. He told her lies about his job and his name. He tells her that he wasn't only interested in her, but also that he saw her at work every day. He pulls out his phone to show Jennifer the security photos that he has taken of Jennifer listing the dates and times when they were, even a video of Jennifer getting in the elevator. Jennifer was afraid that night. 
He claims he is the security guard at the building and then gets furious when he says that nobody notices people like him. He was the front desk worker, so she didn't recognize him. He believes he knows her better than her ex and tells her that everything happened that night because he planned it. He takes out a key to unlock the elevator. Jennifer is shocked and angry at what he did to Jennifer. She tells him that she will call the police and that he will rot in jail. He doesn't like this. He grabs her and they start to fight. During the fight, she flailing her legs. Jennifer breaks the elevator key. He continues to fight her and she knocks her out with her shoe. Jennifer fears that she has killed him, so she approaches him to make sure he isn't. He suddenly jumps up and knocks Jennifer down. Both remain unconscious in the elevator. Jennifer awakens after a while to discover that the man is conscious. He explained to her why he did this. His reasoning was that he wanted her to be free from all the stress and so they could have a more intimate relationship. He claims that they had more than a date. They also had a relationship, and the weekend was stuck in the elevator. Jennifer believes that he won't be able to do it alone because someone will come and rescue them. She discovers that the man has taken all of the shifts that weekend, and that the other guards will not be arriving until Tuesday. Jennifer asks him what he will do. He says he would rather have her killed than sent back to prison. Although he claims he has never forced Jennifer to do anything, Jennifer informs him that she kidnapped him and that this sends him into a spiral of anger. He opens the present Jennifer bought for her ex-fiance. He opens the bag and finds a shirt, as well as a box. He puts on the shirt and tells Jennifer that he will open the rest of his present. Jennifer opened the box to find cigars, complete with all the tools needed like a lighter and a cigar cutter. Jennifer is taunted further by him, who lights a cigar. Irony in a nutshell, he wishes Jennifer a happy Valentine's Day. Later, he apologizes to Jennifer and asks if they can make amends. He offers another chance, and she tells him that she doesn't have to respond right away. It's worth taking a moment to consider it. The guy comments on the travel advertisement that is playing in the elevator, saying that the people in it look happy together. He promises Jennifer that he will take her to the resort in the ad. He is bothered by the light from the elevator that doesn't work. He breaks it down with Jennifer's thermos. He realizes that the ceiling panel's light bulbs must be replaced. He believes he can remove the panel and get out of his elevator. Jennifer stands next to him as he opens the thermos with a thermos. Jennifer offered to help him get up and promised that he would return for her. Jennifer believes it would make it easier for him to give her a boost. As she isn't strong enough, he isn't sure she will want to return for him, so he'll call the police. Jennifer gives him all the information he needs and persuades him to give Jennifer the boost. He lifts her up and she pulls herself out of the elevator. He tells her the location of the ladder and the door. They are both happy to have managed to escape. Jennifer turns her head and gives the guy the middle finger, pissing him off. She climbs up the ladder. He uses the elevator to escape. The guy puts two pieces of clothing together and then throws them over an elevator beam. Jennifer is already moving towards him as he climbs up. He tells Jennifer to run or she will die. Jennifer follows him as he approaches the door. Having already reached the level she is on, she opens the door, screaming for help. He suddenly covers her in a suit and then hurls them both back into the elevator. Both of them fall unconscious. Jennifer awakens first, and she sees the fire sprinklers. She then devises a plan to rescue herself. Jennifer tries to light a cigar to activate the fire alarms, but she fails, so she makes a small fire. The elevator starts to fill with smoke. He wakes up, and Jennifer punches him to break his nose. Jennifer manages to restrain him using a piece of clothing. He claims that the fire alarm will not go off, but that they'll get electrocuted and soaked. Jennifer threatens to severely hurt him and makes him admit to all he has done to her. She turns on her camera and takes a photo of herself explaining everything she knows. Jennifer turns on the camera and asks him his real name. He claims he is John Deacons. John admits to getting them stuck in an elevator by accident. He even looked at the drawing on the walls. He used the key to stop an elevator on Friday. Jennifer forces John to admit that he had trapped her in an elevator. John confesses to her kidnapping and trapping. He keeps questioning her, so she asks him questions. Jennifer questions him about why, and John replies that he was just looking for a date. He would have rejected her if he had approached her normally. John tells her his story before he became security guard. He was an accountant who worked at a large firm and was a hotshot. John tells her the true story of the girl in the car, but it ended differently from what he had implied. He drove straight into the ravine after he missed an exit. The car spun seven times before it was stopped by the tree. The impact killed the girl. John was able to stay out of jail for six months because he had enough resources. He was able to get a job as a security guard when he was released. He wanted to feel like himself again after a few months. Jennifer is still unsure why he chose Jennifer. He claims that it's because she is great. Monday comes and they are still trapped. 
He takes his girlfriend to the building with one of the security guards to show her the roof. They enter the building, he searches for John and when he can't find him in the searchlights, he looks at the security monitors and sees Jennifer and John stuck in an elevator. This wakes them up. Jennifer pleads with him to get them out. He promises to get them out of there while Jennifer falls asleep on the couch. He then climbs into the elevator, pulling the doors open using a crowbar. Jennifer is desperate to get out but he says that he must first open all doors. He then moves on. John knocks Jennifer out suddenly. He says he is there, and he hands me his keys. John informs John that the elevator is not working, and he promises to climb in to assist them. John turns on the elevator to cut them in half and he gets stuck in the elevator. He knocks Jennifer out once more, then takes her to his vehicle and places her in the trunk. John returns to the building, takes his clothes and body out. He gets dressed and takes out his cigar. John goes to the front desk and deletes all the footage from the security cameras. His girlfriend wakes up, so he kills her and then drops her into the shaft. John takes Jennifer to a safe location and gets in his car. To prepare, he pours gasoline in a dumpster. He opens the trunk before he does. John informs Jennifer that he still loves her and that it's a shame they can't be together. Jennifer pretends she's dead. And when John goes over to the dumpster she hits her over the head and gets in the car. She stops at one point when she discovers the lit cigar in her tray. Jennifer begins backing up rams in the car, becoming a scared John. He's in the dumpster, she sees. Jennifer lightens her cigar, then walks off. She flips the lid and into the dumpster to keep John alive. Subscribe and enable notifications to watch more videos like these. Thank you for watching.